Data Modeling Part 1 This short presentation is written for anyone who wants to create a data model but isn't really confident about doing it. We'll use a highly simplified example of an insurance company to illustrate it. The subject matter expert, Theo, will describe the business. As he talks, the analysts will create a data model. Theo tells the analysts that the company has customers who buy insurance policies. Note the rectangles labelled Customer and Policy. The analysts call these classes or entity types. They're the start of the analyst data model for this company. Theo adds that every customer has a customer name. In data modelling, we say that customer name is an attribute of customer. Note that the model just says customer name, not the customer's actual name. Customers have other attributes, including status and postcode. All customers will have these same types of attribute. At the moment, the attributes are cluttering our diagram, and so we'll hide them. This is good modeling practice. We call detail, such as the attributes, adornments. We show only the adornments that are needed at any particular time. Theo tells the analysts that each policy has a unique number. Again, the model just shows number, not the actual number of any one policy. Every policy also has other attributes, such as policy type, purchase date, and price. Theo has mentioned that customers buy policies. This type of adornment is called an association. Theo now adds that to be a customer, a person must have bought at least one policy. It's a business rule. It's part of the company's definition or concept of a customer. We can show that on the model. The number one shows the minimum number of policies that any one person must buy to be a customer. If the minimum number of policies needed to be a customer is two, you simply change the adornment to a two instead of a one. Let's look at Iris. When she purchased her first policy, Theo used the computer system to create two records. One to contain the attributes describing her, and one to contain the attributes describing her policy. Because of the business rule stating that customers must have bought a policy, the record for Iris's first policy must be created at the same time as the record for herself. Iris's customer record looks like this, and her policy record looks like this. We see that the computer system has given her policy the number four. The computer system links her customer record with her policy record. We won't worry about how it does this. That's not our job. Although the model itself doesn't show the details of individual customers and their policies, it does define the business rules for creating and linking the individual records of customers and policies. Moving forward, the analysts know that the minimum number of policies that a customer must buy is one. They now need to know if there's an upper limit to the number of policies one customer can buy. Theo tells them that customers can buy as many policies as they want. We show this on the model by inserting a star or asterisk after the number one. The star means there's no upper limit on the number of policies that one customer can buy. We can read the model at this stage as either a customer can buy one or more policies or a customer must buy at least one policy. Later that day, Theo tells the analysts that the business has decided that the association between customer and policy should be owns rather than buys. Whatever the business wants, it's their business and their model. So the analysts change the label of the association to owns. Job done. By the way, it's normal to put two dots between the one and the star. We'll fast forward to a time when Iris has bought three policies, numbers 4, 9 and 12. 
Ruben owns just one, Matt owns two, and Sophia owns four. The data model doesn't show this directly, but it does define the rules. We can also look at things the other way around, i.e. from the policy to the customer. A policy is owned by a customer. Again, the analysts can ask, what's the minimum number of customers that a policy must be owned by? Theo says it's one. The obvious question now is, is there an upper limit to the number of customers that can own a single policy? Theo says that policies can be owned by more than one customer. For example, let's suppose that Matt, Ruben and Iris buy a new policy together, i.e. the policy is owned jointly by all three of them. Theo says there's no upper limit to the number of customers that a single policy can be owned by. We already know how to write this on the model, i.e. one dot dot star. So, to summarise, a customer, i.e. any customer, owns one or more policies, and a policy can be owned by one or more customers. Note that although we say policies and customers, the words policy and customer on the model are written in the singular, i.e. policy, not policies, and customer, not customers. This is because the rectangles on the model represent classes of things, i.e. it's a sort of blueprint that describes all the policies and all the customers. We know that the model tells us that every customer will own one or more policies. The one dot dot star is written at the policy end of the association. This often confuses people when they start learning how to create data models. Adornments, such as the one dot dot star, are referred to as the multiplicity of the association. The multiplicity is always written in the form minimum dot dot maximum. Let's now start from the policy. We know that one policy, i.e. any policy, will be owned by one or more customers. The minimum number of customers that will own a policy must be one. There's no maximum, and so we use the star symbol. Once you've got these basics, building and reading the model is simple. The analyst just models what the business person tells them about the organization. Data modeling like this should be considered as a very powerful tool for business analysts and business architects. Too often, the analyst thinks that this technique is only for technical people. This is the end of the video. Thanks for watching.